Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're going to talk about NVIDIA's Judson Thor 5000. So let's dive deep into it. So why do we need Thor 5000? Well, simply because robotics is actually getting good. Meaning, back in the days of uh, our Honda's Osmo Robot, which they released in year 2000, it could not have done backflip. But nowadays, the hardware to do this is uh, trivial. I'm not even joking. Like literally, if you have access to Chinese factories and all that, assembling this hardware is like, bro, take it and go. And same goes with Boston Dynamic and all that. So hardware wise, like can you have an actuator that can do these things, motor that can provide the oomph needed? We good, we got this. However, right now, the biggest problem is like, if it can do like, you know, backflips and all that, why can't it just work in real life? Because the processing is limited. Meaning you can have a bots so doing boxing and all that. The moment you put them in a dynamic environment, their onboard processors is like, yo, I'm out. It can't do that. So we have crossed the threshold, meaning if you really want a AI girlfriend right now, it's not the hardware. Like you can literally have a physical bot body that is awesome it's just that the hardware is not that good like she can't she won't be able to walk uh, and again it's not the motors problem nor the actuators problem sensor problem is the this is not there so now what about ai's growth well ai is getting good but it requires to be cloud. So meaning you have to have a server that is robot handling the code. Then you can have a scenario where the onboard cameras can actually look and it's like, okay, this is how I'm supposed to handle. Hardware is there. Hardware, we got it. Like by 2020, hardware was like, we are good. We are just reducing price. 2025, you can do it. It's just like, can you know who to call? That's it. So it's just the AI is also there. Where it's like, hey, I can look into it. This is how I'm supposed to handle it. We good. It's just that it's on a cloud. So that's useless. Just because of the physical latency is just useless. So we need what we call on-device crunching, meaning the camera that looks in your road uh, on a self-driving car needs to process on-device. That's the keyword, on-device. Everything is cool and awesome, but if it's not on-device, many sectors is just like, nope. So complex AI needs a very good software development kit. This is a very critical aspect. It's not about the horsepower. Can you utilize the goddamn horsepower? Like many times, we were like, okay, why can't uh, Intel just release a system that can bitch slap uh, NVIDIA? Why can't AMD does that? Simply because both of these companies, in contrast, NVIDIA really knows how to make SDK. It will become clear when I talk further, but uh, that's the whole point. Like uh, a very good example is PlayStation 3. When it was launched and at the end of its sale, you can have the same PlayStation, as in like the physical hardware is there, like exact hardware. You can run the game that was released at the launch and you can run the game uh, that was released almost at the end of it. The games will look drastically different, but the hardware is same. Like physical silicon is same. What changed? SDK, software development kit was not ready for that. Uh, broad, uh, Broadcom engine, it was like eight core system, very ahead of its time, but the software development kit was just not that good. So you have to understand, the more complex AI is, the more good you need your SDK to be. Otherwise you will just waste time trying to under, uh, get AI to do what you want to do. If the SDK is good, you're good. Training becomes cumulatively productive. And car, robots, drone, warfare, all of this is like, bro, money is no object. Money is no object. We do not count, like take money. Like it's not even shut up, it's just like take money. So that's the need right now. Any company that can master this part is gonna print money, serious money. So Jetson is Nvidia's answer to this. Now here's the deal. Jetson is a very old seed, like very old. The first Jetson TK1, 2014. That puppy is old. As in like, uh, they started the whole series where it's like, okay, what if we make a dedicated Raspberry Pi for developers? So, and the key difference between Raspberry Pi and this is just like, what if it had onboard GPU? They started with GTX 700 for developers. Now you're like, does that really matter? Yes, not in day one, but this is almost like, they have their main companies, main production. This is solely done so they can have software development kit. This is, this is what makes Nvidia a $4 trillion company. Like they planted the seed 2014, it's like, hey, what if we have something that is just for compute? What we'll do on that? Back in those days, object detection, line following, those sort of simple things, like how to run a simple uh, bot, which is doing uh, like, you know, robotics and uh, vacuum cleaner, those sort of thing. So they started with that. 
and by 2015 2017 they went into maxwell and pascal generation like gtx 10 generation series and then they slowly started to pivot into uh, edge computer because early it was like you know just very dumb things then it was like oh, what if you can pre crunch the data so that started by 2022 and you can see like they are slowly 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 increasing the horsepower and by 2023 they started to release backwell series which was rtx 50 series silicon and again, at that point in time, it's AI Pro, as in it can do the same thing that a flagship server can do, flat out. So at this point in time, you can buy a very high-end device that can do on-board uh, generative AI, meaning if you make a, like, you know, girlfriend bot, it can actually have a conversation without requiring a server connection. That can be done, like today. And again, it has enough horsepower that she can actually navigate the world, physical world, just on her sensors, simply because the processing in on-board. So you won't have that Blade Runner where it's like, you know, hollow projector now. It can do on board. Although let that be very clear, uh, it's more likely we're gonna have robots before we have holograms. So I have no idea why people so this invert artificial oh, hologram is cheap. It's like, no, nah, that's the most black magic technology we have seen in the CGI world. Yes, yeah, so robots are much mm, horrifyingly close. So humanoid is there, autonomous car, shut up, take money. Defense system, shut up, take money. And the idea with this is like you buy this and then you mass order this, meaning you buy this, test it out, figure things out, and then you design what either call it doctor board or motherboard, depending how you want to qualify it. It's like, what do you need? For example, this TV, it will have something similar to this. Again, it will be done by LG, not me, but uh, the idea is LG will go. It's like, yo, my man. Uh, the semiconductor department is like, well, uh, how is the OLED production going? Okay, this is the panel. Cool, awesome. The metal guy frame and all that. Then how the heck are you going to run the uh, basically Android TV operating system? So they're going to find suppliers. They can find ARM suppliers. They can find uh, some other supplier or they can even have on-house silicone. In those sorts of many companies use this. Once they have filled it, they buy this in bulk and then they utilize this as a system and that gives them the benefit like for example how uh, LG has uh, CX, BX, AX it's like why even the panel is same it's like I'm not even joking there is like uh, CX 55 inch this is CX uh, BX 55 inch AX 55 inch it's like why are you smoking the panel is exactly the same uh, and again Nvidia can give you the option it's like hey if it's a simple device or like a low-end device use a nano 4 gigabyte what if it's like flagship series uh, okay Orion NX 16 gigabyte on device basically the spins will remain the same and you can swap it out if it breaks or you can swap it out if you want to upgrade the power you can increase it although i don't think they have multiple generation compatibility but the idea is very good and people love it and again raspberry pi is also doing the same thing so jetson is the key part this whole pipeline they have been slowly chipping away at it slowly working it in behind the scene and this is what that allows them to like okay if we release the hardware it works why it works because we have been working on it 2014 so let's dive deep into T5000, this puppy. So this puppy is a Blackwell architecture GPU, as in at this point in time, there is not much better available. Like you can try this or that, but like at this point in time, this silicon is like, bravi we good, we good. Like if your AI does not run on the silicon, people will blame your AI, not the silicon. So we got this. Now here's the deal, GPU without a CPU is useless. So this puppy has 14 core ARM, Neoverse. Neoverse is not available for civilian use simply because it's designed to be a high performance, high oomph device for servers and all that. Although I, I'm pretty sure some company will try to bring it in a smartphone, but uh, 14 core R Neoverse, 2.6 gigahertz CPU. So decent, decent oomph is there in the CPU was, meaning it can do scheduling and all that. Now, again, GPU itself does not matter as long as you do not have enough uh, basically memory. If you have very little memory, GG processor does not matter. Le slow processor, but GG RAM, ultra GG. So this has 128 gigabytes of RAM. That's a lot. Uh, 256 bits uh, of but, uh, bandwidth, so to say, and low power dual data rate 5x, not 5, 5x. That, that means translation, 273 gigabytes per second of data throughput. That is good. That is like you can process a lot of token parallelly like this puppy is like i got this i can crunch through it like because again if you are driving a car you do want to process things at at least 120 fps i like why do humans uh, only work at like 24 frame per second yeah that's why we crash you want to make sure the car can predict how the car is going to skid if it applies brake too randomly so 120 is the bare minimum heck right now if you buy a sony's latest generation of camera with uh, that ai chip autofocus algorithm the basically motor system yeah the AI algorithm that it has, that is also working at 120 hertz. So it's pulling, analyzing, pulling, analyzing before the motor even reaches where it needs to go in the lenses. Like I know how much it has to move. 
So you want like at least that much kind of throughput. So, and in terms of horsepower, uh, this has 270 uh, teraflops. That is GG, like it, it, few years ago, like not even like decades and decades ago, just few years ago, that was supercomputer level. So that is bonkersly good. And what about power envelope? Because again, it is designed by the bots and all that. Although that is the biggest uh, limiting factor, which I can see in next five years. You can have your girlfriend bot without any issue. It's just that she will run out of battery every hour. I cannot see lithium chemistry holding up that much. It's just, or we have to make energy far more, uh, what you call efficient. So this puppy alone can start from 40 watts, go up to 130 watt. So, and again, our whole body does not generate that kind of power output uh, when we are idling. So, it's like if, if, if she's on a bed, it's like the bed will start to heat up. Again, you Westerners will love it because apparently you have cold. We need have, in India, we need high power air condition. So, 130 watt. And again, it has every single interface under the sun. This puppy can handle 20 cameras through uh, high speed bus. And I'm like, why do you need 20 cameras? Have you seen a self driving camera? Yeah, self-driving cars can easily, like easily. And again, you never want a self-driving camera to have a color camera. So the idea is you generally have a lot of black and white camera that gives you real world, high dynamic range, high speed footage, like what's happening. And then you have a lot of color cameras to do context clue. Basically, uh, is the signal red or blue? And like, uh, basically color gives you a bit more uh, nuanced data. And uh, it also has other PCI lanes available. As in PCI 5.0 is available, eight lanes of them. And in terms of networking, because again, they are for some reason expecting you stacking multiple of them for getting more oomph, uh, 20 GPS. That is good. <laughs> so, and in, it has every interface, let's be real. Like if there is an interface, most likely this puppy has it. And if it does not have it, it can bit bang that interface. Don't worry about it. It's like five I squared C, uh, four U art, four CAN bus and this bus and that bus, every other bus. It's a truck. Don't worry about it. So that's the whole point of it. Meaning you buy this, develop the whole software and all that. Either you can mount this whole thing into your robots, which generally not recommended. You're gonna mount this and basically design a custom daughter board that can mount this puppy. So this is T5000. Meaning Nvidia is reaching a full polish point where the other companies are just like, how do you make a hardware that works in this sort of scenario? Nvidia is like, bro, we got this. Long-term experienced, we got this. 10 years ago experience, we got this. So that's why, like this shows that somebody is you not know, like, bro, we are dealing with a car, it has CAN bus and this bus and that bus and like just don't worry about it, give the whole truck. Everything is there. Meaning I can easily see it is like, oh, I have a lot of black and white camera, a lot of color camera, a lot of LiDAR and a lot of other sensors. So like we good, we good. We can maintain the car at 120 FPS. As in like the response rate. Because again, you have to understand, even if your brain can process, like the AI can process, the robots have a response rate. <laughs> Meaning if even if you apply the brake, robot will take time to transfer the system. It was an issue where a lot of EV cars, because they have such a good control with their motors, it's like, what if we control and study the torque of the system? Yeah, you can do that, but rubber will act as a low pass filter. It's just like you are doing hundreds of corrections, rubber is like, bro, 20 corrections. That's maximum. <laughs> because again, it, it needs time, like, you know, it needs time. So this sort of system is really good. And again, if one is not good enough, stack two or three of them. And that's why the, it has such a high bandwidth uh, interface, so to say. Now, that's the hardware part. More and more company can actually make that. That's not impossible. It's just that the moment I touch SDA, uh, Software Development Kit, this is the part where NVIDIA's experience shine. This is the part where it's like beating them. Here is the main part and most people are not focusing on here. Like generative robotics transformer. Like there are a lot of AI. Do you have an AI that is only built for robotics? NVIDIA is like Groot. I am Groot. So that is pre-trained model is specifically built for physical AI, basically how these things work. It's like, we got this, we good. And because they have such a long history experience, you have unified ecosystem of CUDA, TensorRT, UC, DNN, meaning uh, skill set will transfer quite easily. And software is like, I got this, I got this. Basically, like imagine this way, if you are used to one Autodesk product, you can easily switch between other Autodesk products, be it SolidWorks, uh, sorry, no, SolidWorks is different. Uh, Fusion 360, 3ds Max, Maya is also Autodesk now, but you get the point. So. And they have not that one SDK, there are other like Isaac that is for robotics. Then you have DeepStream for vision, something like that. And then you have a Holoscan for sensor, LiDARs, something like that. And then you have Metropolis for smart city. Meaning if you want an AI dedicated for city planning, it's like, we got this, bro. We good. We got this. I'm pretty sure they might also have something. Oh, you want to jumbo jet planning. Hey, bro, give them the jumbo jet SDK. They have that. 
So that is there. And documentation and community matters. And NVIDIA is really working on that. Like you would be shocked how much effort they put into that part. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, meaning you started early. So that gave you the only advantage you needed. And then you, they kept polishing it, creating an issue system based issues were detected, resolved, and that allowed our hardware team to work on like, okay, what do people want? Where do our people tripping? That created a feedback loop. So this is the true reason for NVIDIA's AI dominance, meaning other company can try hell and high water, it's just that the software part won't be there. Like you can easily look at the example of uh, Intel's uh, approach to dedicated GPU. Even though they have GPU silicon in every single CPU, they did not have the oomph needed to compete. Again, it took them a lot of time to polish the hardware, uh, polish the GPU. And again, AMD is hated for that reason. It's like, buy AMD GPU now, wait for one and a half year, then their GPU team will finally catch up a release. It's like, oh, now it has more performance. No, you finally fix the driver. And Nvidia is on the other end, it's like, you buy it. If there is a new game release, they give you the updates. And of course, they keep refining it on the back end, but it never goes like, oh, so many people say AMD's GPU, uh, you know, ages like a fine value. It's a hardware. It has silicon in it, it has capacitor, it has a resistor. Resistors drift over time, capacitor degrades over time. You cannot change it. So it's not like, okay, I'm gonna put it in a box. It's gonna degrade whether you use it or not. So it has a fixed life sign, it's not a wine. It just like a wine. I have no idea how the heck people fell for that on electronics. So because of this sort of SDK development, I can easily, easily expect in next eight to 10 years, Nvidia will be like, we good, bro, we good. So now the question is, what can we expect in the future? Well, this shows that NVIDIA has very long term plan. Right now, everybody is like, okay, what about large language model? What about this and that? And they're like, bro, we know that is a bubble thing. We good, we can pr print money from that, but we need something else after that bubble goes kaput. Robotic. Like this is very far out. Right now, you and I do not think about bots to be ready, but I've seen things. I have seen things. And those things are saying, we could be much closer than what people are realizing. And again, once you have the girlfriend, first girlfriend bot that actually is useful, even with battery life of, let's say, one to two hours, trust me, DARPA level money will start to flowing in. Like even DARPA will look like, bro, we don't have that kind of money. Trillions of dollars without interest. Just go in. So things will happen. And again, NVIDIA is like, we good. We got this. We can give you the full chat GPT while having full Groot where we're like, bro, we can actually interact, physical interaction and all that. That can be done. And again, taking care of the ugly part themselves, as in the software development kit, not just like, oh, you bought the hardware, figure it out. No, 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 we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna work with you. That is the thing. And that polished experience is the biggest uh, selling point. That's the whole reason. Like because CUDA is, has been used by other people, it creates a feedback loop. It's like, oh, I know CUDA, I'm gonna buy CUDA. So more things will be in CUDA. So more people will buy CUDA, they will use CUDA. It's like self-fulfilling. Well-oiled SDK environment is the key. Meaning if you want to make something, make sure the SDK is top notch or at least have an ecosystem where it's like, okay, this is the problem. This is how we're going to work on it and all that. So that's the thing. I can say DGX, Groot Foundation Model, OVX, Isaac Lab in Omniverse, AGX, Groot Stack, everything they're sorting out. It's like how the heck you're going to make the whole server? How the heck you're going to train the exact uh, loaded model? And how the heck you're going to deploy it to physical AI? All of that is like... <laughs> From their point of view, basically NVIDIA's point of view, large language model was just a start. They know where they need to go and they're already planning the seed for it. So physical AI bots is the next big thing and they know. They know that they need to market this because again, I'm telling you, the moment the first girlfriend AI becomes good, they're gonna be printing money. I can easily see them going from 4 trillion to 14 trillion in maybe as quick as uh, 2035, maybe? Something like that. So. So that's the future. So this was my presentation on Thor 5000. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.